Matt brings so, up the um, the statistic that we have got. I think it's twelve points from sixty available. Oh, so goodness. just the the obvious question then for you both, and I guess it's got two parts to this, um, Jacob. The the owners were there yesterday, so it'd be interesting to see what they made of the the booze at, at full time, um, and whether they will persist with this. Because as Glenn points out, they've invested a lot of money, uh, yeah. more than we've had invested for a while, yeah. and they're not going to be one of being in a in a relegation battle. So. Yeah. Um, do they, or how long do they persevere if, for example, assuming we're not going to beat Man City, but if we don't get anything at, I think, West Ham at home? The other part to that question, and a few people have been mentioning this, how much of this is on them because they weren't able to secure the striker which we needed during the window? As exciting right. as it was to bring in all the young players, right. they were very clear that we need to get a striker because we need to score some goals, and they didn't do that. So do they right. shoulder some of the responsibility for this? I'll answer the second part of the question first, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> they did sign 10 players. They ch changed a lot of that team. There's only so much you can do in one window. Um, so I think they've done a lot of it has been really good, to be fair. And there's always going to be one or two blind spots in a team that you know you need to kind of just adjust until the January or the, summer, the next summer. To answer the second question, there's a, there'll be a piece coming up tomorrow morning where I can explain a bit more. But um, Ralph Arsenal is, is fighting for his job. You know, there's no getting away from it. There's, you know, as Matt says, there's what 12 points in 60 games. Any manager would, and just because the loyalty shown in the past to Ralph, uh, as as you know, been ha be happening, it doesn't mean this is the case now. I think the club are well aware that there's a now a growing shift in the fan base that perhaps Ralph's times come to an end. I think you see that in performances a little bit in terms of there's no excitement anymore. As I said, it felt like sadness yesterday. So, and there's, you know, there might be other issues, you know, going on internally at Staplewood and stuff like that, away from the pitch in training, for example. So it's, yeah, as I say, it's, I, so apologies that I can't really go into detail, but um, I do think that Ralph's uh, job is is at great risk. And, um, you know, I think there or would it have been surprised if something happened last night either. Okay. Well, well, I look forward to reading that tomorrow then. Um, Glenn, same question for you. Um, people talking about managerial changes this year, I guess, coming up with the, with the World Cup. Yeah. Is he still here by the time we get to the World Cup? Um, or... That's what I initially sort of predicted. Um, my, my stance on Ralph is that this time last year, Martin Simmons gave an interview where he said, you know, Ralph is the best manager that we could have. And, and I largely agreed with that. Um one year further on and I'm totally don't care whether he stays or goes to be honest I, I don't think it would be the worst thing if he went um you know and I think I think he's lost his enthusiasm I, th I thought he was looked thoroughly beaten down at the tail end of last season and um I said in the summer when we were talking about it that you know he's got to come back with the enthusiasm that he had and and Jacob made the point before I could I, I just don't think I just don't think he has, and the team is a reflection of that. Mm -hmm. We've certainly looked at it the last the last few games. There's been this season. There's been the odd spark, like the Chelsea game, where we look good, and the Leicester game where we look good. Um, but in the main, it's been sort of limp and uninspired. And on top of the back end of last season, a manager is, and the results that we've been getting, that the manager is always going to be under pressure with that. So I thought they'd give him to the World Cup, to be honest, given the money that they'd spent in in the summer. Um, but but now I, you know, you got to assume we're going to get beat next week, and then it's West Ham at home. I think lose lose that one, and it's game over with another dodgy performance and I don't think he'll be there the week after. It, it might depend on who else pulls the trigger of course because now Wolves are looking for a new manager and you think that we might be in the market for the same sort of managers, the same level as them maybe? Do you think that? Well they'll get, they'll get a Portuguese guy we've never heard of. <laughs> so you know I, I don't I think yeah I, I see you I see your point but I don't think um, I don't think Wolves are going to be um, yeah I think that they'll get someone obscure like they normally do. Um, but yeah, them, I mean, you mean Leicester. Are, have Leicester played this weekend yet? Or they play uh, tomorrow? They play tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean... That's the thing, walking out the ground yesterday, looking at your phone, looking at the fixtures, going, right, well, 
look, the results from the teams around us. You know, let's let's have Forest lost today, have Wolves lost today. Um, who are Leicester playing? And that's mm. not what we want to be doing when we're walking out at five o'clock, just checking and hoping that the results have gone our way and we're not going to drop into the relegation. No, zone, and then so. and then you see a team like Brighton who are doing fantastic. Top four still, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely fantastic the way they're playing at the moment and the results they're getting. And um, there's no reason why they should be that much better than us given the resources that you know that that they've got and 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 we've got but they are light years ahead of us absolutely light years and and that's you know that's i know you shouldn't cast envious eyes on other teams but you, you can't help it sometimes when you've mm. watched a game like we had yesterday and then seen that they probably should have beaten liverpool yesterday I think Jacob made a good point actually about his body language as well. I was watching like when we got the six minutes of of added time yesterday. Frank Lampard was still there with his sleeves rolled up and he was shouting every bit of encouragement and direction at the team. Ralph was just sat back on the bench with his head in his hands, looked like flat out of ideas yesterday. And I think you can read a lot into that.